All right, y'all, we got this makeshift hooked up for this video. Oh, there it goes. Oh, she's blown. Basehead family, thank you guys for checking in once again to, of course, a new video. Today, we're looking at the line that is, of course, replacing the infamous Apocalypse AA K-Series amps. And that is, of course, the Apocalypse Sport Series. We're going to be taking a look at the whole lineup, opening one of these guys up so you can see what is going on inside, and of course, hooking one up and seeing how it does. Now, Def Bonds had the AAK line of amps out for a pretty long time. These things are an absolute beast. If y'all have the pleasure of getting a demo with one of these amps, you'll just be amazed how well they do. I, of course, had my 815s on this guy right here, but I went to one show where I did not have this guy hooked up. I had a cheap amp in there just, just to test it out. That amp blew. So my buddy Remy hooked me up with an AAK uh, 8K to get me through the day, which I thought, hey, was going to be all right, but wasn't going to be anything crazy. Y'all, it ended up absolutely blowing my mind. Sounded incredible. Still able to do all the hair tricks in my no wall. Now, while that wasn't an incredible amp, there is one problem with the AAK line of amps, which is why they come out with a new line. And what that is, is the price. Now, I don't got to tell you this, but it feels like everything out there is just getting super expensive, super fast. That of course, groceries, gas, rent, anything you can imagine, which of course means, hey, honest working people like myself, like y'all, can't afford to just go out and buy the most expensive stuff, even though that is probably what we would like. That being said, hey, if we're in the base, we still wanna be loud, we still want a solid amp, and we wanna get the most bang for the buck. Now, of course, there's a lot of options out there, Full bridge amps are really coming onto the scene. Definitely a really affordable way to get a lot of power in a compact package. That being said, hey, a lot of people don't really like full bridge though. They wanna go with that Korean style half bridge amp. That style of amp is just known for being super ro robust, can take a ton of abuse, puts out a ton of power, and still sounds really, really good. That is why guys, Death Balance came out with a new line of amps just to fit that market. If you want the quality of an AAK series amp, but you don't want to pay that price, this is the line for you. Now the Sport line, still a Korean style board. Only difference is they have a manufacturer in China that are building these as opposed to a manufacturer directly in Korea. Now I know a lot of guys, when you hear China, you think that means low quality, but y'all pull your iPhone out, out of your pocket until very, very recently, most of those have all been made in China. And guys, 90% of the stuff that we use day to day is made in China. Some of it is absolute junk. Some of it isn't. Regardless, guys, it is just way more affordable to order stuff from China than Korea, which is why DefBond went this route. Now, just to explain to y'all how much cheaper these things are, y'all, to get the AAK 8K, it retails for 1750 bucks. That is one expensive 8K. What Death Bonds was able to do with these guys is that, for example, the 8K version is only 1050 bucks. That's right, guys. That is a ton, ton of savings for what they say is still pretty much the same quality. Let's take a look at the lineup, show y'all what they have. Currently, they have six amps in this sport line. First off, they have three two-channel amps. You have a 1000.2, a 1500.2, and a 2000.2. And then over here, we have the one-channel amps. Of course, got a 4000.1, a 6000.1, and an 8000.1. All of these guys always have the oversized zero-gauge input that will fit stuff like the oversized sky-high wire. Fits in there just perfect. They also fit your... Standard dual inputs. Here's a DS18 one for zero gauge. Fits in there with room to spare. Sky High Car Audio. Oh, that fits in there. Literally perfect. Very nice. They all have the really nice Tiffany style connectors. And the one channel amps do, of course, have master and slave modes. We also, of course, we have gain, subsonic, and low pass filter over here on all the one channels. You'll notice, hey, 
No base boost on these things because, y'all, we don't need it. And on the two channels, we got gain, high pass filter, and you can go between 1x and 10x. Crossover, high pass, flat, low pass. So you can use these for your bass. And then, of course, we've got the low pass adjustment, 1 and 10x there as well. And, of course, power protect and cliff lights. The two channel amps all have just one pair of inputs. The one channel 4K has two pairs. And the 6 and 8K have three pairs. Also, one thing I thought was interesting, this 4K has the outputs on this side with the inputs, which is the same on the two channels. But, of course, the 6K and the 8K have the outputs on the opposite side. All right, y'all, time to open one of these fellas up and see what the guts look like. Now, I was sitting there thinking, which one do my viewers want to see the inside of the most? And, well... Y'all, that's obvious. You guys want to see the big boy 8K over here, so let's open this up and see what we're working with. Okay, let's take a look at this, starting with, of course, the input side. Y'all, these things are beefy and thick. Got all these MOSFETs all around the whole thing. Of course, 38 of those fellas. You'll notice we got tons of glue on literally everything in here they do not want this thing wiggling around shaking around glue 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 more glue of course we got the def bonds logo stamped right there that's cool we've got 24 of these yellow caps over here these are 2200 microfarad we've got eight of these massive looking transformers then of course over here we've got these Big old caps. These are 200 volt and 1200 microfarads. Of course, guys, that leads into the output section over here. Y'all, I don't even know what any of this stuff is, honestly. I am not an amp expert whatsoever. But we've got eight of these 200 volt, 680 microfarad caps. Four more of these transformers. I don't even know what these are, but they're doing something, I'm sure. All kinds of good stuff. Of course, there is a fan right here over the output section blowing directly down. Of course, I have lots more glue. Over here, we've got what looks to be either 6 or 4 gauge wire. This is what is leading to our output terminals. Over here, we, of course, have two sets coming out of this guy. Pretty, pretty beefy. Like I said, guys, not an amp expert. Um, I'm sure I got some of the stuff I even said there wrong. Hey, if you want amp expert videos, go watch Willison Audio Labs. He knows all the cool stuff that I do not know. Honestly, all this is over my head. I would just rather play around with subs. But, hey guys, subs would not do what they do if it wasn't for these beastly amps. So, gotta show them some love too. I want y'all to let me know in the description, in the comment section below. Hey, does this look like a high quality amp to y'all? Looks to be a well-made amp. But again, hey, y'all let me know if there's any amp experts watching Leave a comment below going over what you think. All right, y'all, we got this makeshift hooked up for this video. Now, again, we're doing a real world, real world test here, so we're not hooking this up to a dyno like you would see Willis and Audio Labs do. Of course, you know, if you really want to see what an amp really does, go check out his videos. But here in the real world, you're never going to see exactly one ohm, half an ohm, two ohms, whatever. So we're going to get as close as we can to see, what again, what this guy does in a real application. First off, we've got this timpano fella over here now this is a dual two ohm that means we can wire it down to one ohm we'll hook it up we'll see what the amp does we'll see how much uh impedance rise we're getting from the sub again in a real world app application if you hook up a one ohm amp to a one ohm to a final impedance of a one ohm sub those that impedance is going to rise you're not going to get the full power output so we'll be able to see with this one sub then we've got this audio pipe back here it's also a dual two ohm so of course We'll wire both subs down to one ohm, then we'll wire them together down to half an ohm. From there, we'll be able to see, one, can the amp handle being ran at half an ohm? Two, how much power will it put out? Now, of course, we'll probably rise up to one or maybe even two ohms. But point being, having it wired below an ohm, we should be able to see if around the ohm, if we'll get that 4,000 watts or not. Can't wait to see what happens. Okay, much like the AAK series, they're definitely an amp. You definitely hear the fan in these things. It is decently loud. And here's that bass knob. Looks pretty cool. We got the red 
with the blue. I'm surprised it didn't go with the green LED, but hey, it does look pretty cool. Guys, we have the vehicle off, so the alternator is not on. That's why we're sitting at 13.3. Point being, hey, we are definitely below that 14.4, but, but again, real world test over here. Let's see what we get. All right, guys, wired down to one ohm. Hey, rising up. That last song was like 1.8 to like 2.5 ohms. And the amp was putting out 3,000 to 3,300 watts. Absolutely no problem giving this big fella right here a run for its money. Point being, guys, this guy puts out the power even at 2 ohms. And for this being such a ghetto-looking setup, hey, it didn't sound too bad at all. All right, next up, let's turn up the sketchiness a little bit more. Going to hook this guy up as well. That will, of course, drop us down to a final impedance of about... 0.5 ohms, half an ohm. One of the reasons that people like the Korean half ridge amps is that they can handle being wired down to half an ohm without popping, whereas some of the older full bridge amps um, would like to pop when you'd run them that low. All right, guys, got both of these subs hooked up. And as you can see, we're sitting right at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohms. Rising up to like 1.3 to 1.6 ohms. Now my volts are falling to like 12.9, but we're still getting about 36 to 3700 watts. So I'm gonna turn the car on now. We'll have the alternator. That'll help the voltage out at least a little bit. We'll see if we can break up into that 4000. Okay, so this, this guy is up front. You can see what's in that 14.1. This guy reads the battery bank. You know, the battery bank, again, this puts such a suck on the system that is really bringing that voltage uh, down, but hey, we'll see what we get. Alright, that little bit of voltage helped y'all. Again, about half a volt there that helped us squeeze over into that 4,000. Still rising to about 1.3 ohms. Hey, not mad at that score. All right, let's turn this up a little bit as you can see how loud it is. Rattling the whole shop out here. Pretty cool, guys. Hey, pretty loud with a janky mismatched system. Imagine if we had like two nice 12s and two nice 15s in there, y'all. This thing would absolutely beat the door off of it. All right, guys, we've got one more test on this guy. Oh, here we've got one of my old Gothic subs, which are literally falling apart. But anyway, we're going to be hooking this guy up to the amp. Going to run 40 hertz through it until the sub blows. When that happens, we'll see if this amp 
goes into protect correctly and if it uh, makes it through it or if it pops the amp. Let's find out. All right, let's get it. She's blown. All right, let's get this turned off. All right, guys, this coil totally blew. This coil still seems to be hanging on, though. The amp didn't make any crazy popping noises or anything, so I'm going to hook another sub up to it. Uh, just make sure it's still working. We'll see. The amp is on. We are not in protect. It doesn't look. It doesn't look like it. Let's see if this guy still works. Yes, sir. The amp is still going. Oh yeah. Good. There you have it guys. This 4K made it through the blown sub test. Now I do gotta say, when you blow a sub, when something shorts, honestly any amp can blow. I've seen really nice amps blow. I've seen cheap amps make it through. Let's get into the things I liked about this and the couple cons. First off, hey, I like the power. Does what it says it does. Two, I like the looks. Big, beautiful looking amp. Internals look nice. Of course, I love the Tiffany style connectors. All the adjusters and everything feel really nice. Inputs, of course, I love that we have dual inputs even on the 4K and they are plenty big for oversized zero gauge wire. It sounded great. It did exactly what I would expect it to do. It was all around just a really solid amp. Couple possible downsides. One, the size, this is a Big, big amp for a 4K. Being half bridge, guys, these are just big, big amps. That is, of course, just the nature of these. But it is hard to beat full bridge amps, just how compact and small they are, if you're tight on space. Two, of course, while the price on these is much, much better than the AAK series, these are a really good value for a half bridge amp. Still a lot more expensive than your full bridge options. And three, the fan on this guy is pretty loud and it stayed on nonstop. Not a big deal if you're playing music, you don't hear it. But if you were just driving around with, you know, no music playing, I could see how the fan could get annoying. Work around to that, you could have a on-off switch for this amp, so you could just turn the amp off when you're just driving around, which probably isn't a bad idea to do anyway. Well, guys, let me know what y'all thought about this new line, line of amps. And, of course, once again, a huge shout-out to Deathbonch for sponsoring the channel, for sending me this stuff to check out and to show to y'all. That's going to do it for this video, but remember, as always, guys... Keep basing on.